Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to have some time this morning. And, and Ms. Stanley, as, as we talk about the decisions being made by, by you, the school board, everybody in the district, how, how tough has this been the last week or so? Um, it has been a very challenging week, um, but I would say it's been challenging for our leadership, our principals, our parents, our students, and our community. So it, it is challenging, um, but uh, we are all working together and trying to keep our students as our focus point in how to um, get instruction for them. We're also taking into consideration our staff. As we have started to do some flexible scheduling, we are trying very hard to make sure that our staff will still receive a full years of service, that they receive pay, and that their insurance is um, in good standings. And so there's lots of different aspects that we're looking at, yes. Yeah, the list never seems to end, I'd imagine. And how, how is the alternative learning working now that we're on our fourth day uh, in, in the Henderson County School District? How's that been going so far? You know, our teachers have been rock stars. And um, they, in a very short time, pushed that instructional uh, piece out to our students. And now that we know that we're going to close the week right before spring break, so we've extended our closure through April 3rd, and then our traditional spring break is the 6th through the 10th. We are in the plans of um, deciding how we will be able to push out that instructional work uh, to our students for that third week. Yeah, that's obviously a challenge that not only you, but a lot of other districts are facing if they make the decision to extend uh, this in-person break at least. H how have school lunch, lunch deliveries and or pickups been going? That's something I know that, that with so many students in your district, that's probably been tough as well. It has been tough, and we originally started with three schools, and we chose the three schools because they're our traditional summer feeding program schools. But then very quickly, our child nutrition director learned, and our transportation department, um, department director learned that we've got to um, get out to some more of our remote areas to be able to get lunches and breakfast for our students. And so the last three days have just unfolded from three sites to now we're up to somewhere between 15 and 20 sites that we're delivering to. So there's some long days and uh, long hours of decisions. Um, but again, it's how can we best serve our kids um, and the community at this point. Yeah, Ms. Stanley, we talk about those tough decisions being made. Is there a possibility, you, you guys make this extension now where students won't come back until the 13th of April, our school is, is at least out until the 13th of April. Is there a possibility that will be extended even further into the month of April, uh, depending on how things shake out? Yeah, that's a great question. And I get that asked that I don't know how many times <laughs> every day, either in a professional setting or just in the evening, you know, in a, kind of a personal setting. Um, anything right now is probably possible, to be quite honest. We're in a pandemic, and nobody really knows what that could and should look like. Yesterday, universities sent kids home for the remainder of their semester. So, um, you know, we, we will start to make plans as soon as we uh, feel confident that we know how to get that um, information out to our students for the third week of closure we'll do spring break, we've got now some weeks to plan um, already to get plans in place in case that does happen. So we will be prepared and we'll be ready. And if we don't have to use those plans, we'll be all happy to be back in school, but um, we certainly will be prepared. Morgana Stanley, one of the busiest people in the Tri-State, thanks for taking time to, to join us this morning and good luck today and for the next few weeks. My pleasure. No. Thank you.